Okay, let's have a look here. So the first one is a label diagram of the apparatus that Walton and Cockcroft use. So actually, there's no point in me drawing something that exists perfectly well in uh, a book here. Um, so quick Google got this rather nice diagram. You probably have something in your physics book very similar or identical to that. So that, that one's okay. That's um, the standard sort of experiment diagram question that's okay and there's the picture if you need it to pause the video and have a look at it <clears throat> uh, okay write the nuclear equation for the interaction between a proton and a nuclear uh, lithium so that one is a proton plus uh, a lithium and lithium is seven three and that becomes two heliums two alphas plus energy yeah that's the equation there for this experiment that they did if i remember correctly uh the mass of the proton is given on page 83 as that convert this mass into kilograms uh, right so that's 1.007825 times the atomic mass unit which is in the formula book on page 83 uh, I'll just get it from Google well maybe I should get the value that's used in the formula book peak at page 83 uh, oh actually that's not the page I need because that's just telling me that yeah so I need the page that has the value of u on it um, okay so let's go back here um atomic mass unit there it is there okay so calculator time 1.007825 times 1.660 times 10 to the power of minus 27 yeah so obviously a small amount uh, it doesn't say anything about decimal points, so I'll just give the full number six seven three five three three nine two seven times ten to the minus twenty seven kilograms. Oh, it does actually six decimal places. My apologies, I thought I saw that somewhere on the paper. Uh, six seven three five three four. Six seven three five three four. Okay. Uh, four. Explain the discrepancy between the value uh, you have calculated and the value given for the mass of the proton on page forty seven. Explain the discrepancy between the value you've calculated and the value you're given on page 47. Let's have a look. Oh. Um, oh, there it is there, mass the proton. Yeah, yeah, I see now. So I was just pausing there <clears throat> to have a look at precisely the difference just to make sure we're okay so in the formula book the mass of the proton is here 1.67262667262621 67 
three five so you can see that uh, six seven two six six seven three five yeah okay I think that difference can be explained just perhaps by the electron so what's happening here is that the mass of H1 <coughs> that would include an electron and that's why it's a tiny bit bigger than the mass of just a proton so I think the difference is the difference between just a proton versus a proton and an electron because I know that roughly speaking an electron is about a thousand times smaller than a proton so you would expect to see a difference here in the third decimal place which is what happens uh, yeah so I think the difference is just the electron I think okay calculate the kinetic energy of the proton as it collided with the metal and then the mass lost in kilograms during the interaction the energy produced so that's all fine we can calculate that okay but the kinetic energy of the proton as it collided with the metal okay so we have to go back here the accelerated okay so what's happening here is the potential energy at the beginning is equal to the kinetic energy at the end so calculating the kinetic energy of the proton is just the same as calculating the potential energy that the proton has as it's in the electric field so the potential uh, so the kinetic energy so I'll actually I'll write it the other way around that the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy now what's the formula for the potential energy again um, the Q uh, V isn't that it because the formula is actually Q E D and the uh, E is V over D yeah it's just Q the charge times the voltage so uh, the charge is this E constant in the I think that's what they call it in the formula book the charge of a proton multiplied by the voltage 70 uh, thousand volts so let's see yeah okay times 70 thousand now do you know what actually if they accept the answer in um electron volts because they never mentioned the unit here we can there's a quicker way to do it the energy in electron volts will just be the same as the voltage it should just be 70 kilo electron volts i think that'd be the quickest way to get the answer now that i think about it um because the definition is one electron volt is the energy one electron would have in a one volt so if you have seventy thousand volts seventy thousand times the energy and it doesn't matter too much that it's a proton because it's the same charge now the mass lost during the uh, interaction so we'll have to calculate the mass at the beginning which should be bigger minus the mass at the end so Fortunately, they give us the H here, so that's 1.007825 AMU. Um, but do we have it for lithium? Or will we have to use the periodic table in the formula book? Let's have a look. No, 
Okay. Uh, lithium is three. That's fine. I'm looking for masses now. Oh, here we go. Lithium. There you are. There we go. 7.016005. Yeah. 005. And then minus two heliums. So do we have helium? There we go. Four point zero zero two six oh three. Okay, let's take out the calculator. Plus seven point zero one six oh oh five minus two times four point zero zero two six oh three. Yeah. That's 0 0.018624 AMU. So I just have to multiply it by the AMU constant, which I had on my calculator earlier, but now it's gone. Right, where's the AM? Atomic mass unit. There we go. So times 1.660542 times 10 to the power of minus 27. Uh, we'll go with six decimal places again. Why not? Zero nine two five nine zero um, times ten to the minus twenty nine uh, kilograms. The energy produced in joules. So the energy that's just good old Einstein's E equals m c squared. So I have the m. So now I just need to multiply it by the speed of light squared speed of light is 2.9979245A times 10 to the power of 8 squared. Okay, so that is equal to 2.779481 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. How fast is the alpha particle going? Well, this energy we've calculated, it's the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. So if we use the formula, a half mv squared equals that e, then we can say that the v will equal root 2e over m. Okay, root... 2 times e uh, over m and that's the um, alpha particle that's the helium mass which I, sh uh, I had it where's it gone here we go uh, helium 4 is the alpha particle 4.00 times atomic mass unit 1.660542 times 10 to the power of minus 27 okay okay let's see if I get a sensible answer yeah pretty big 28920175 meters per second oh there's two alpha particles so that's being shared oh so that mass here there's two of them so there's twice the amount of mass that I taught a moment ago so that means I need to fix my answer here. It's going to be smaller now because the kinetic energy is being shared. So basically what's happening is there's like two of these, a half mv squared plus a half mv squared. 
Mm -hmm. So that's going to be 20449652 meters per second. So uh, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. A proton may be classified as a hadron. Explain why? Because it experiences the strong nuclear force. Sorry, I'm running out of space. And a proton may be classified as a baryon. Explain why? Baryons are particles that have a mass greater than or equal to the mass of a proton. So that's the reason for that. Okay, hopefully all this is correct. Now let's just read through it, double check. Draw the diagram, okay, I've done that. Write the nuclear equation out between a proton and a nucleus of lithium. Okay, that's balanced, that's fine. The mass of H1 is given as that. Convert this into kilograms, so I've done that. Why is there a slight difference between that and the value for the mass of a proton? I think it's because the electron is included in this guy, so it should be a little bit bigger, uh, which it is, because I think it's the difference between a three and a two. Uh, calculate the kinetic energy, so that would be 70 kilo electron volts. Calculate the mass loss, so that's just the subtraction of the mass before minus the mass afterwards uh, in kilograms. Um, the energy, that's Einstein's E equals mc squared in joules, it says. The speed of the alpha particles formed, so there's two kinetic energies will equal this energy. These obviously cancel. Um, and I hopefully it's that if I fix the mistake on the calculator. And then a proton is a hadron because it experienced the strong and the weak. I think it might just be enough to say it experiences the strong. And uh, a proton is classified as a baryon uh, because baryons are anything that is equal to or greater than the mass of a proton. Okay.